If ever there was a reason to go sailing, it is this. The ability to explore places few people venture. Not just tourists, locals as well. Balambangan is the northernmost point of Malaysia off the tip of Borneo and it's a real gem. Getting to the island is difficult enough. There are no tourist boats and the only residents are Bajau Laut, the sea gypsies. The first anchorage we visited was a twisty, turny affair through reefs and bommies. Surrounded by lush, unspoilt nature, the anchorage offers great protection behind the reefs. The place is teeming with wildlife and is inhabited by saltwater crocs, the perfect habitat for them. We're going ashore to have a look at some caves that we've heard about, and we're just waiting for Craig and his crew. They're going to take us there, so quite exciting. These are caves that are not sort of public tourist places, they're just some caves that these guys know. And we've got some lions already in the water, they're fishing. James has got a line out, I haven't seen any sign of fish yet. Might have to try that myself soon. We hooked up with local residents, Craig and Josephine, who are taking us to explore some caves that are not on the tourist map. Getting to these caves is a muddy experience. The rickety old jetty is hazardous, and so too are the saltwater crocs spotted that day. It's a hack through the forest, guided by Josephine and their best friend, Bob. The entrance to the cave is hidden and unassuming, but as we approach, we could see into the gloom that we were about to enter somewhere a bit special. open cavern dripping with pristine stalagmites and stalactites served as a stone forest. Smaller caves shot off down pathways to increasingly beautiful formations. Ribbon stalactites fell in swathes of fold from the ceiling to the ground, forming zipper-like teeth along their sides. We crossed small pools and trod carefully around trellis-like formations underfoot. Finely chiselled statues watched as we made our way to the back of the cave, which opened up into a high vault. We were in the middle of the Lord of the Rings. Our guide, fellow Brit Bob, 
who's been living in Sabah for years, has been documenting the formation in these caves as well as the surrounding flora and fauna of the island. Hi, welcome to the unnamed caves on Balambangan. This is one of four, uh, one of 20, only four of which are accessible to be discovered. We're in a, this beautiful cave system here, which is on your film already. It's extremely remote and very, very few people have been here. Maybe 10 to 15 people a year come here. Some years nobody comes here at all. So it's completely pristine. It's a very beautiful place. Super impressive, eh, Liz? Yeah, beautiful. So do you know how to tell the difference between stalactites and stalactites? Well, one goes up, one goes down. And the way I remember, actually, I've forgotten I remembered it this way, is that the C in stalactite stands for ceiling and the G in stalagmite stands for ground. Oh, that's how I simple. do it. I've got an even better one. Go I remember on. I learned this as a kid. Yeah. Stalactites hang tightly from the ceiling and stalagmites might reach the ceiling. So as long as you've got one of them, you know what the other one is. Well now, how impressive were those caves? Uh, almost on a par with the Mulu caves, to be honest. And uh, Bob was saying that he thinks probably 10 people a year come to this place. So he is looking to do more exploration along with Craig. Uh, there are other cave systems around the island which are much more inaccessible. Um, but of course the idea is, is to gather as much information as possible to prevent uh, the possible mining that is being proposed on the north of the island. So uh, this is one reason why we're very keen to promote this area as well. It has far more opportunities for tourism than it does for mining surely. Uh, but those caves are just magnificent. So we're quite privileged to see it in its state as it is at the moment. Now, if you thought that cave was impressive, the next day we were taken to another one that was completely unique. But before we go there, you've just got time for a quick cup of tea. If you have an aversion to bats, look away now because there's going to be a lot of them. find ourselves in the middle of a big chamber 50 meters high right in the center there's a big hole in the middle and you can see back up outside obviously the most striking thing about this place are the bats of which there are millions and millions all flying around uh, they were flying around here before we got here we could hear them in the distance and we thought it was water um, kind of ironic isn't it in the middle of covid that we're standing in the middle of a bat cave but uh, never seen anything like this. And still some beautiful stalactites, stalactites, and also some uh, discoloration of the rocks that have gone pink due to some kind of process, which I don't quite understand. But uh, anyway, just take a look at this, it's amazing.
Don't forget, if you like our adventures and our stories, you can support us. We have the Rum Fund, we're on Patreon, and we have our own exclusive FTB Mates. All links are in the description below.